guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some skincare products with SPF that I think are helpful for those of you who wear makeup. Um, about a year ago, I did a video on tips for reapplying sunscreen over makeup. I'm gonna link it down below. Make sure you check it out. You know, applying sunscreen over makeup it's challenging and I always get questions about it. I have some tips in that video that I think are really useful. But today I've got some products that kind of go along with those tips. First and foremost, in my opinion, the best thing to do when it comes to sunscreen and makeup is to make sure you start out with a very good base layer of sunscreen all over your face, neck, ears, sides of the face, <clears throat> around the eyes, super important and i recommend starting with a high spf the higher the better because bear in mind that it's going to be difficult for you to reapply a good layer throughout the day one of the reasons we recommend reapplying sunscreen in the first place is that people under apply sunscreen to begin with there are a lot of skip areas so you really want to be as thorough as possible and so i recommend starting with a high spf and doing two layers apply one layer about a half a teaspoon allow it to absorb fully and then apply another layer another half about you know approximately half a teaspoon before moving on to your makeup so um one sunscreen that personally i love you guys see me wear a fair amount and it's the la roche posay spf 100 on thelos melton sunscreen milk this is a chemical sunscreen. There is no cast to this, and it has a matte finish. It's not, um, it doesn't have any mineral actives in it, so it's not going to leave any kind of white cast, interfere with the appearance of any cosmetics that you apply on over. It's water resistant. I mean, it really makes a nice uh, base for for cosmetics. So do, again, the two layers, like I said, this is a great one. Um, however, you know, moving into the warmer months, I know a lot of people who wear makeup, they, you know, they don't wear as much foundation in the warmer months and the summer months, and instead they kind of, you know, gravitate more towards tinted sunscreens and things like that. If you have a skin tone like myself, I highly, highly recommend this Color Science Even Up Clinical Pigment Corrector. It is expensive, no lie, but in my opinion, it is worth it. I did a paid promotion with them a few videos back, but this video is not sponsored. I love this product. And it really gives, in my opinion, and bear in mind I'm not a makeup wearer, it really gives good coverage of, you know, just spots, veins, and things like that. I mean, it's very good. And part of why I think this is so expensive is that they really did put, a, you know, a good bit of research into the development of this product. There's a study with this product looking at how well it protects against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. You know. If you have a deeper skin tone, I think I think this is gonna be too too casty. But for me, there's no no cast. I mean it's like it's like I'm wearing some kind of a foundation or something. I mean it really it really goes on like like a makeup product. So this is another great option. You can put it around your eyes. Um, you know, the prior product that I showed, the La Roche-Posay sunscreen, it's a chemical sunscreen, so some people find that those burns sting around the eyes. This should not bother around the eye, you know, bother you around the eyes. It's very good. Yeah, I really, really like this product a lot, and I, I encourage you guys to, especially if you're somebody who wears makeup and you have a skin tone like me, and you're, you typically wear a foundation and then maybe towards the warmer months you swap out to like a tinted moisturizer, definitely try this. It gives very, very good coverage and you know is a nice alternative to, to foundation. All right, so <clears throat> that being said, if you choose to wear foundation or makeup, try and choose a makeup product that has SPF in it. Why? Well, you know, you're gonna be putting stuff on top of your base layer of sunscreen. There's always the possibility that it removes some of the base layer of sunscreen. So it's nice to kind of balance that out with a little bit of an additional SPF here and there. So for example, if you're using a foundation that has sunscreen in it on top of your base layer, great. But never rely just on your makeup for your sunscreen. You really need that base layer to begin with. 
Um, so that would be the next kind of thing in line. I personally cannot wear foundation. Um, it's, you know, it, it really aggravates my skin, so I never wear them. But something that I think is really helpful, especially if you have mature skin, for touching up sunscreen here and there is to try and maybe in consider incorporating a BB cream or CC cream. Why? These tend to be more moisturizing than powders, which is something I'm gonna get into in a moment. I know people with more mature skin, they find that powders settle into creases and you know, are not as, you know, they're not very flattering, as opposed to people with oily skin. The powders tend to help absorb some of the excess oil, mattify things, and so powders are a better choice. So you can keep them in your bag and then, you know, throughout the day, you can use them to kind of touch up your makeup instead of, you know, reapplying your makeup or attempting to put on another layer of sunscreen. You know, ideally you would be putting on another layer of sunscreen, but I recognize that that's just gonna destroy your makeup. And if you're in the office all day, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I understand this situation where it's like, do I need to be reapplying a full coat of sunscreen on top of all my makeup? No, but you do need some degree of reapplication. Um, I did a video a while ago reviewing different CC creams and BB creams. And one that do not sleep on at all is Derma Ease. They have um, this uh, tinted moisturizing BB cream SPF 30. This is the light shade that I have for myself but they have uh, a pretty good shade range actually for a BB cream. It's a mineral sunscreen. It's not drying, it's moisturizing. It's not greasy or shiny. They did a really good job with this product. It has zinc oxide in it. Um, and the deeper tones don't leave a grayish lavender look to the skin. They provide really good coverage. Um, and so this is another good option for just touching up throughout the day. Um, it's moisturizing, not too dry, but it's also not greasy. So I love this product a lot, it's very good. I also really adore the uh, Beauty Balms or BB Creams by MD Solar Science. They're really good. They're very flattering on the skin. Um, here I have the light medium shade, and I also have the medium dark shade. I really like the way these look two on the skin, they kind of give a nice healthy radiant glow. They're not super matte or drying or anything. I know a lot of people don't like, you know, they find mineral sunscreens can be very drying and, and kind of a little bit too on the matte side. These give almost like a pore blurring effect, but they're very moisturizing. Um, they leave the skin feeling silky and smooth and they give a nice healthy glow to the skin, but they don't look orange or anything like that. So these are some of my favorite. You know, MD Solar Science, they have fantastic sunscreens. So these are, these are, you know, some that I would, I continue to recommend. They made an appearance in my BBCC cream video. And yeah, I, I love these, they're really good. Um, one that a viewer actually sent me a while ago that is definitely worth considering, uh, it's very budget friendly, is by CoverGirl. It's their CJ Smoothers BB Cream. This is a mineral sunscreen. Actually, it's a combination sunscreen. It's got zinc oxide and a chemical filter to block out some UVB. Um, it's, this one I have is SPF 21. I believe it comes in three shades. I've been really impressed with this product too. It's not drying either. It's, it's actually kind of similar to the MD Solar Science, maybe not as glowy, but it's a nice affordable option. Um, and again, it's not drying or greasy. It's just right. It's just right, somewhere in the middle. So this is a good one for touching up. All right, let's talk about powders though. I get a lot of questions about using the powders. They're a good option for reapplying over makeup for sure. Obviously, like with the issue with the CC and BB creams, you're not getting a good like layer on over over your makeup. You're not getting a truly, you know, protective even layer, but you are at least getting something. It's a nice compromise between not doing anything and doing some, you know, doing something. Uh, so I do, uh, you know, I do think that that's a great option. And like I said, you put on a full face of makeup and you're in the office all day. These are good options. Now, if you are going to the beach, 
this is not gonna be the routine you wanna do. You're just gonna to wanna to do sunscreen and not you know, be worrying about a full face of makeup. Uh, if you're gonna be outdoors all day, uh, th this is not really a safe way to reapply sunscreen at all. This is more for when you're primarily indoors all day um, and you, know, you gotta scoot in and out to the car to leave from work, how do you reapply? All right, moving into the powders though, like I said, they don't, they don't give an even application or whatever, but they're really nice for touching up and they mattify. A lot of people hate sunscreens because they look so shiny, but if you come on over with a mineral SPF powder, it can really mattify that. Now, if you have mature skin or dry skin, it can settle in the you know creases, make your skin look drier. Uh, and it may not be flattering, but many of you really enjoy the mineral powders. Um, I have been a longtime fan of the Color Science um, Sun Forgettable uh, Mineral Powder. I think this looks amazing on the skin and I love it. They also have a translucent. These are really good if you have oily skin because not only do they help mattify, but they help absorb some of your oils. Uh, SPF powders, they kind of make wearing sunscreen a lot more tolerable, more acceptable, because uh, a lot of people with oily skin, you know, you've got the film of sunscreen that creates that kind of flash of a shine, plus you have your own oils, it makes, it, it creates a barrier for people wanting to reapply. And so these are nice uh, to kind of help mop some of that oily shininess up and help facilitate you reapplying uh, more consistently. So these by Color Science are really good, but they, like the other Color Science products, are not cheap. But I do recommend them, they're very good. Another nice use for these, by the way, is to put along your hairline and your, and your part uh, to protect your scalp. So those I love. Um, and I also love, where'd it go? I also really love the one by Derma E. It's SPF 30, and a lot of you guys have bought this because I, I get questions about what's a good mineral powder with SPF on my Instagram, and I frequently share this one because it is a lot more budget friendly, and I love it. And many of you have purchased it, um, and you guys tell me that you like it a lot. So this is a good one, free, free of fragrance. If I didn't already mention that, these products are all free of fragrance. Unlike the Color Science one, this one comes out a lot more readily. These are really good to just keep in your bag and use to touch up throughout the day. It, you know, I like I like them. They have their limitations and that's, you know, they're, they're gonna be skip areas, they're not perfect, but they're nice and people are more willing to use those. And so it's nice that you're at least getting some form of reapplication in there with them. And again, they do help with the shininess and the oiliness. Now, what about an SPF compact? These are a really good option too for touching up sunscreen and um, and makeup and you know dealing with, with having makeup. Um, one that is great is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Compact SPF 55. This is a chemical sunscreen. It's very good protection. And this is a good uh, drugstore option for uh, for reapplying over, over sunscreen. Another one that's great, can act as your foundation, is the Aven High Protection Tinted Compact SPF 50. This one actually has been shown in some studies to uh, protect from those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. But it doesn't come in very many shades. I don't know what is going on with Aven, at least the US uh, branch of Aven. They did away with their liquid sunscreen. I hope they come out with some more sunscreens for us here in the US. As a side note, I believe they, they've just come out with a new filter in Europe. Uh, I think, uh, so that's exciting, but here we don't have that, unfortunately. Um, so I hope they never discontinue this compact because it is very good. Um, and as far as the protection that it affords. I wish it came in more shades. Unfortunately, it does not. All right, a product though that you can get at the drugstore that is also noteworthy is the Physician's Formula Mineral Wear Airbrushing Pressed Powder, SPF 30. This is another good uh, product. It comes in a, sh you can get it as transparent, creamy natural, or beige. This is a mineral sunscreen, so very good if you know, you've got sensitive skin. All right, one more product that I wanna draw your attention to if you're a makeup wearer by Color Science. I think it's really useful for people who wear makeup is their Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy. Um, this is a great under eye concealer, but it really brightens up the look of the under eyes. 
I highly recommend this. It's expensive, but I love it and it's always worked out well for me. Now, for those of you with mature skin, I have gotten comments that this particular product settles and creases, so you you know, you may not care for it. I adore it, love it. If you have dark under eye circles, definitely consider this product. It is very flattering and provides a very good protection against ultraviolet radiation as well as those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. And it's easy to reapply around the eye area. Um, so this is an option for those of you who wear makeup for kind of the eye area as far as the aesthetics. Uh, so it's nice if you can find a lip product that has SPF in it. And I have been trying out these from MD Solar Science. They sent them to me a long time ago. Very moisturizing, not drying. It's a chemical sunscreen, but you know, sometimes chemical sunscreens on the lips can be kind of irritating. Um, these, however, I find to be very moisturizing. I'm wearing the shade red. I'm just gonna reapply it. The packaging is nice too. There's no flavorant or anything in these either. Definitely check them out. They have like jojoba seed oil in them. And I think they look nice. So those are a great option for the lip this summer to give you some protection, kind of falling in line with the needs of makeup. And then the other product that I um, remembered, I don't have, but I've used in the past and really enjoy is Supergoop's Lip Screen SPF 40. This is a clear lip gloss. Um, it's a chemical sunscreen and it, it's great. It's not sticky, it's not drying, it's not irritating. The only thing about it is that they recently changed the formula a bit and they have, maybe they always had this, but they added vanilla in, which is a flavorant. And if you will recall from my videos on lip rashes and things, flavorants in lip balms can be irritating and cause problems. But otherwise, it is a good product. So definitely check that one out. Uh, Supergoop has some great um, sunscreens. As a matter of fact, I forgot to mention their invisible setting powder when I was going through the powders. This is another good option for those of you who like the powders. But yeah, their lip screen is great. Um, I haven't tried their other lip uh, products but I think they have a tinted one as well. So comment below and if you guys have used those, but I have been super happy with these MD Solar Science ones. Uh, Neutrogena has some good tinted lip balms. However, I think if I remember correctly, while they look great, they're moisturizing, they don't dry out the lips, they only have So you are sacrificing a little bit of UVA. But that's another you know, option there. Now, Color Science had came out last year with some lip balms. Look great, drying as all get out. They are so drying. So yeah, definitely try the MD Solar Science ones. They are super moisturizing and I really like them a lot. SPF products that so you can reapply over makeup or use alongside with your makeup, uh, incorporate into your summer makeup routine, help you stay on track with reapplying sunscreen to some extent, uh, especially for days that you're mostly indoors and you're wearing a full face of makeup. But again, I wanna emphasize that if you're gonna spend the day at the beach, outside by the pool, doing some, you know, maybe going to a barbecue, anything that you're doing outside for the bulk of the day, this strategy of using these kinds of products to reapply, it's not enough. You really want to, you really want to just go back to your sunscreen and make sure that you're reapplying that while you're outside. Uh, but for indoors, you know, scooting in and out, wearing the full face of makeup thing, these are good options. I hope this video is helpful to you guys. And again, I will link down below in the description box my video on all the tips that I have on sunscreen over makeup. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.